Oh yeah, so the Death Star Remnant still has power for this door. What? And I think Ray should have taken the offer. The, re the rebels kill so many people. And then they make eye contact with Finn and Poe and you see them, you see them melt. Ray in pursuit of the Sith Wayfinder gets on the skimmer. Why is the skimmer so complicated? Flying in Star Wars is easy. Why is this thing so complicated? She took the skimmer? 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 British. British. Look at this. There's so many parts and controls. Ropes. Oh gosh, and it's like not obvious. It's not like you're sitting at a pilot seat. Like here's the controls. Like there's, there's controls on the front and the back of the ship. Right. And it's like, you've got wheels. So you want to turn left and right, but you don't have that option. All the wheels are facing forward. Oh, so if I want to gosh. turn right, I got to roll forward and pull the rope in the back. And like, what the heck? But, but that depends on which side of the wheel you're standing on, which one like looks forward. Like just make, just make a normal wheel, like a bus. Just make a normal what are we wheel. Doing? Steering wheel. What are we doing? <laughs> what, what is this? Gosh, you know? the, the only reason I can think that it's more complicated than the, from the starfighters is that maybe the starfighters are newer. And so a lot of the, the manualness has been removed from them. Like maybe, maybe the original starfighters were like super complicated, lots of stuff. And so things are simplified. And so since the skimmer is super old, maybe it's still complicated. So this would be like an old Republic skimmer like thousands of years old and technology has way progressed and simplified things but this is just really old and been maintained for i don't know what would the timeline be thousands of years old republic or are we talking oh, hundreds of yeah. years and in wet environments this stuff's going to break down that's not good but even if you give so, star wars tech uh, some boosts because it's better tech it's still 100 years would be impressive no no like 500 years would be impressive that would be incredible. That would be incredible. That would be, that would be incredible. Mm -hmm. That's assuming great maintenance. So okay. 500 years ago, Star Wars tech was like ultra complicated. And Ray still knows how to pilot it. Sure. Oh gosh, how does she know how to pilot this? <laughs> She's working those wheels like like a pro. Like, uh, yeah, it's not like, you know, there's no, there's no <laughs> tippedness at all. She's like, like, go and like crank the thing. Like not a problem. Yeah. And like pull in ropes, like, oh, what? I didn't even know there was a rope in this. <laughs> How did that rope survive? Gosh. Gosh. Gosh, it's falling apart. Look at it. But she makes it. She makes it. She makes it and she makes it onto the Death Star and she sees these former troopers. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Like a bunch of armor, but there's nothing in them. Like there's no, like if they died recently, I can, there would be uh -huh. like, like bodies. Right. And if they yeah. died a long time ago and, and like the bodies decompose, then I'd imagine you'd see skeletons, but there's really nothing. And so I think, I mean, I made this up that they were eaten. And so I think it's, I think it's, yeah. Right. That's so fair. I think it's the Ewoks. So the Ewoks captured, they, first of all, they're over, they're over Endor. That's the battles, the battle of Endor. Yeah. And so then here's Han and Luke and the Ewoks capture them and they're going to cook them and eat them. And so I can imagine if the Ewoks got yeah. in here, then they'd be like this armor stuff. Like we can't eat that. So like, you don't carry it around. You strip them off, you take the bodies. So I think that's what happened here. I think they were eaten by Ewoks. So the Ewoks had a big old barbecue, but, but oh, wait, God. <laughs> right? is it? The, it's the forest moon of Endor. And it's one of these Star Wars things where the entire moon or planet is one ecosystem, just forest. But this mm. is like tundra oh. ocean stuff. Does, but the Death Star fell yeah. on the mo rebel moon or the forest moon of Endor, right? Because that was, that's what it was in orbit of. Or did it fall, fall somewhere else? That's a good, it, that's a very good point. Because if it's, because I think this this is the forest moon of Endor, right? And yeah, it's forest yeah. stuff, but that we're definitely not. I think I think definitely. we're not there then. So uh, where did the Death Star end up? Moon Kefbir. Kefbir. Okay. 
Lando and Wedge and Tilly's and an X-Wing both flew inside the superstructure, knocking out its main reactor and finally destroying yeah. the Death Star too. Large pieces of the Death Star landed on the ocean uh, ocean moons of the moon Kefbir, poisoning the waters around them. Okay, so I guess they're not on the uh, they're not on Endor. They're not they're so, not in this place. And so Kefbir, so I guess Endor is the gas giant, and the forest okay. moon is a moon around Endor, but not the only moon. I see. I see. But then that means they're not on the Ewok planet. That's right. That's right. So the Ewoks did not barbecue them up. So, but I mean, I think this is a reasonable guess that somebody stripped the armor and then took the bodies. Yeah. Because there should be skeletons. It would, you know, because be all the flesh, the flesh would be eaten away, but the skeletons and survive. If it was like a bear or something, I don't think, imagine the bear like carefully removing all the armor. Like you'd be like messed up armor. This looks like something with hands did it. I think this is worse. This is worse. Yeah, this is worse. I think it's. I think it's the. It was. Who was here? It's. She took a skimmer. I, is it these people? Is that why? Is that why they have the skimmer? Because they, 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 they go. They go harvest they, bodies. I think that's right. No, 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 no. The bodies would rot, and there would be a window. Where the Death Star fell and they got the bodies before they yeah, rot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, could yeah. run in there, grab up all the bodies and bring them back and have a feast for like a couple of weeks. But then eventually the meat is going to degrade. This is this is too dark. This is so dark. Is that, is that why? Is that why they're like, come back to our village. We'll talk about it. They're like, were they, were they going to eat Poe and Finn and Ray? And that's why she's like, she's gone. Like Ray's gone. Like, because they had dinner plans. That, that, yeah, that was, that was breakfast. Oh my god. Star I, I, I can't, Star that, that can't that can't be. That can't be. <laughs> but why are the bodies gone? Why are the skeletons not there? There should be bones. Who? There should be bones. And as far as we know, there's no one else on this planet. She took and, and there's no Ewoks on the planet. And I don't know what they're eating. I mean, I guess they could be eating these, like the humans could be eating these, but like humans don't eat horses. We don't re eat the things we use for utility. I think they're cannibals. I, unless I'm like filling in lore with like, there's a band of cannibals on the planet that had a feast. It, these are the only people here. All right. There doesn't seem to be any other animals. Cool. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, so the Death Star Remnant still has power for this door. What? Let's watch. Oh, okay. So the Death Press Star is broke. First of all, how does Ray know that the importance of this chair? Like this is just a chair. Like, how like does she know that this is the Emperor's chair? Is there like a force aura around the chair? She's like, oh my gosh. Everything oh. <laughs> Everything Palpatine like sits in, leaves his like <laughs> ass force powers <laughs> like it's fine. He has like a force fart. It's like, oh my yeah. god. Oh my <laughs> midichlorians yeah. are caught in the cushions. Like, I, I, there's no way she would be this looks like an important room but is she going to be like ah uh, clearly this that's well, the emperor's the former chair like and how, how window. it could be a pilot i don't know and how often is the emperor chilling in this chair all the time or is it just a ceremonial chair does he have like a bed that he sleeps in most of the time like <laughs> or like a command center i guess he was here when the battle was uh, Endor was going on. Hmm. Yeah, but why would she know? Okay, the point is, why would she know? And there's no way. Know. There's no. There's no way she's just a chair. And then this door is open. Yeah. Or this door like senses her that she's there and then opens. Why is this thing still powered? So does that mean that the Death Star is not centrally powered? Meaning there's like batteries in the walls that power doors and stuff and it just was never used and it wasn't destroyed so it just held onto its power 
I mean, I guess it's a really good idea to have your space station map powered by multiple things. So that way, if you don't have like a single fuse break, then everything shuts down. And so, yeah, I guess this section was powered by a battery that seemed to be okay. I guess you could have you could have a central power source in the Death Star, which then distributes power to local batteries and energy storage devices, which then drain to power things locally and then are recharged from the central location. And when it came down, if that battery was able to hold onto its charge and not get destroyed or damaged, okay, it still powers the door. Right, and I guess if there's nothing draining the power for 35 years, then if the batteries are here really good, then sure. Right, sure. I guess it's not completely ridiculous. It did feel ridiculous, if, but... Yeah, and feels coincidental. Like that battery could have been toast and then now she just saw a wall. That's right. So you maybe the chances of, of doors here and there in the Death Star are still working is high. But this specific door working, the chances are fairly low because mm. this is wreckage. Yeah. Yeah, like 99% mm. of the Death Star breaks, but this 1% is right where it needs to be. Right where it needs to be, yeah. Right. So after this, after the fight... Ray and Ray hops right into Ren's fighter, and Ren is is off somewhere else having his mental mental thoughts, and she mm -hmm. just hops in and takes off. But like, isn't there? There's no like thumbprint or like key fob or like key or anything. She just gets in. What? Just no security. No security. Like, sure, they're like push to start cars, but you need to have the key fob with you. There's no like key in the ignition. There's no like ID badge. There's no like, like I'm Kylo Ren. This is my ship. Turn on now. Like, like anybody can get in. Yeah, he didn't like throw her. The, he didn't throw her the keys. Like, here you go. She didn't like, like pick his pocket and like shove him to the ground. Like your car is mine. Yeah. But I thought maybe, oh. maybe the first order likes that for their fighters because you like, it's a combat vehicle so you don't necessarily want people like where are my keys like oh it's in my other pants i gotta go back to the barracks like you want to just jump in the vehicle turn it on you're ready to fight so maybe that's why maybe maybe that's for efficiency's sake and reduces training requirements i mean it is so plus it's so simple like she just hops in and is like grabs the mm -hmm. controls off we go into orbit in different places in contrast to the skimmer, which was so complicated. <laughs> so complicated. <laughs> um, so there's no security. It's super simple to use. I guess I could also imagine this is Kylo Ren's like specific TIE fighter. And so he could be like, disable <laughs> disable the safety, the security stuff on my ship. And they're like, no, I'm like, no, sir, you have to have. And he's like, sure, force choke. Like, take off force the security choke. measures. <laughs> okay, like, okay, okay. <laughs> Anybody like can minimally, get in ship, It's like minimally annoying, just a key. But he's it's like, Kylo Ren. Yeah. I don't yeah. do it. Can you imagine, like, on the right side, he's got the lightsaber, and on the left side is jingling, jingling, all his keys <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> for every door he needs to get into. Can't be stealthy anywhere. Gosh, but then he could just in he could install like a custom button, like in some weird location that nobody else is going to know about. He has to press that button. Gosh, like, that uh, that button could be like in the engine that nobody can ever possibly access, and he's just like force push, push push, boop. Force right. push boop. and nobody, nobody else is going to know it's there. Yeah, that's right. Weird. This scene. So for me, Kylo Ren has a great character arc, even though I struggle with these yeah. movies. His arc is a tragedy. Oh, my God, I really felt this scene because he's done so many unspeakable things. There's really no coming back from this except self-sacrifice. And he has this gut-wrenching conversation with his father in his dream. Well, let's watch. Hey, kid. Oof. Oof. I miss your son. Your son is dead. No. Kylo Ren is dead. My son is alive. Oof. 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 That's heavy. You're just a memory. You are a memory. Come home. It's too late. She's gone. Your mother's gone. But what she stood for, what she fought for, that's not gone. Ben. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Dad, I know. Uh, 
So I didn't understand this when I watched this movie. What does he what does he know he has to do but doesn't know he has the strength to do it? So in episode seven, he says, I don't think I have the strength to do it, which he's talking about killing his own father. Here, mm-hmm. I think he's kind he's going to the light side now, and he knows he's done terrible, terrible things. And what he has to do is sacrifice himself for the cause. Because there's no real there's no real coming back from what he's done except through self-sacrifice and so Mm -hmm. he's worried he won't have the strength to make the sacrifice i think that's how i interpreted it Hmm. and then the throwing away of the saber which tactically unwise is yeah because he could have taken that saber and gone after palpatine doesn't he need a saber it's just a saber it's something like a dark saber it's red though but so if he throws the saber i guess that means he's throwing away the dark side and the kylo ren past to now go Hmm. self-sacrifice for ray and the rebellion and he's still unsure if he has the strength to do it plus his father uh and so he's I like th- so do, do you think han is a force ghost or is this this is actually just on kylo's head i think this is in kylo's head that was my interpretation because oh. i there's han yeah, doesn't he, han's not force sensitive or right. not so he, yeah right. so he would i guess only force users can become force ghosts somehow han all people become one with the force, but they're unable to do a force ghost unless uh, they're trained. You have to be trained and you have to be skilled in order to use it. I see. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's my headcanon. I don't actually know if that's true. I, I think I think it's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Just this scene, it was gut-wrenching. Father-son talk. The tragedy of it. The, the irredeemability of what Kylo has done. Gosh, it's heavy stuff. It's heavy. And like Kylo is looking for redemption and he's like conjured, he's conjured an idea of his father in, in his mind. And he's even, even then, like after killing his father, mm-hmm. he's still supportive and trying to help Kylo to the, to the good side. And like, yeah. this is what Kylo Ren needs to hear. And so he's making that, I see it. Yeah. Oof, heavy. Heavy stuff. But I mean, a good character arc. I mean, right. It's, it's brutal great, and yeah. tragic, but he dips down and sees the darkness and then he has to climb his way up it's frustrating in this movie in this trilogy of movies that there are arcs for finn and ray and poe and well kylo gets a great arc but there are arcs in there for everybody and it only really kylo gets this arc that i feel the other arcs i don't mm-hmm. feel i'm not sure why that's right but you know Kylo's a bad boy, just like us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're back on the Luke planet. I don't know what it's called. And the Luke's former X-Wing is under the ocean. And it's been under the ocean for 20, 10 years? Ever since Luke? 10, 15, Mermaid. 20, something like that. Yep, yeah. Yep. And so, and then, I, I don't remember if it was Luke or, or Ray lifted up <laughs> out of the ocean and then landed on dry land. And then they take off. Doesn't this mean okay. that if this X-Wing was supplied by the suppliers on Canto Bight, that they're really the, honest? The Canto Bight is like the, the gambling planet? Yep. The planet where, the, oh, yeah, yeah. where, where the people were. They're all bad because they sell weapons to both sides. Mm-hmm. They're actually bad people. But what you're saying is they make good quality products. So like they're, they're businessmen and they're not cheating you. Like they're selling you, mm-hmm. a, they're selling you an X-Wing and they can sit underwater for like 10, 15 years mm-hmm. and then come up and then fly. So they're not like a used car salesman, like upselling you a lemon. They're actually, Mm -hmm. okay, they're getting money, but they're providing you with a quality, well-engineered product. They could be dishonest. It looks like they're not. This is a well-engineered product. You're getting quality when you buy from these arms dealers. So quality at affordable price. It seems like just a good business person and not like a, like a business person trying to screw you over. Like they just sell good stuff. They sell good stuff, get a profit, get their cut. But you get a great item in like, return. You're not cheated. Like clearly, this is a good thing. So, are the people on Canto Bite bad? Like, honest I think, businessmen. I think they're not. They're. they're I, think they're I think they're just. They're honest businessmen. They're not evil. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 And who the fuck is this guy talking to Chewie like this? Buddy, we need you. Buddy? Who the... Buddy? Who the... 
What? You're not you close to Chewie. Who are you? You have not who earned that you? closeness. You are. This is Chewie. You're probably a general. You know, high, super high in the rebellion at this point. You do not get to call him buddy. Could you imagine you're on like a navy ship and you're like, you know, a lowly lieutenant. And you're like kept going, walking by the captain. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> you're gonna get in trouble. Okay. 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 It's worse than that. It's worse than that because like. Here, the captain is Chewie, and Chewie's like he's sitting there with his head down. He's going through stuff. Like Han died, and Leia just died, and like, and so, so he's he's seen all his friends disappear. And then this underling, this some random dude that just showed up in this episode, he's like, "Hey, buddy, hey, buddy, you want to do something? You're going to contribute to this war effort?" Like Chewie's done so much for the war effort. Mm. He's been here since mm. since the beginning. That's right. He is. If he needs to take a moment and process, he's not being a coward and trying to get away from the fight. He's taking a moment before he goes to the briefing. And this guy mm -hmm. is saying, hey, we need you, is implying that Chewie is trying to get out of the battle. How about... How about... How about you mind your business. Um, you mind yeah. your business. Understand your rank. This guy's a general. Right. He's one of why the original they, leaders. What? The, why, why are they tr mistreating Chewie? What is going on? This is nuts. That's right. Chewie could just smush this guy. He, he comes, up, he comes up to like his stomach height. Come on, yeah. Come on, guy. Uh, what are you doing? He calls him buddy and implies he's a coward. It's absolutely outrageous. Ridiculous. Uh, so mad. <laughs> I think this guy survives. Uh, well, I don't think he actually goes into battle. I think he stays on the planet the whole time. Oh, he's a coward. Okay, okay, okay. You just push the blame on other people. Go, cool. cool. Mm. Then they have this chaotic battle briefing. Just imagine being a person in the back of the crowd. You're like, what? what who, who's talking? What are you yeah, saying? Yeah. And then, oh, he's talking over there. Finn's talking. Oh, no, now Poe's talking. Oh, no. yeah. wait, who's talking? There's, there's no talking. podium. <laughs> there's no podium. There's no microphone. Like, who am I even supposed to be looking at? Like, I just hear voices going off. Let's watch it. Yeah, 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 let's watch. As long as those Star Destroyers are on Exegol, we can hit them. Hit them how? They can't activate their shields until they leave atmosphere. Which isn't easy on Exegol. Mm -hmm. Ships that size need help taking off. Nav can't tell which way's up out there. They use a signal from a navigation tower like this one. Except they won't. Air team's gonna find the tower, ground team's gonna blast it. Ground team? I have an idea for that. Once the tower's down, the fleet will be stuck in Atmos. <laughs> Just a minute, with no shields, <laughs> no way out. We think hitting the cannons might ignite the main reactors. That's our chance. We need to put some holdo maneuvers, do some real damage. Come on, that move That's is that one guy. in a million. Fighters and freighters can <laughs> take out their cannons if there are enough of us. We'd be no more than bugs to them. That's where Lando and Chewie come in. They'll take the Falcon to the core systems. Send out a call for help for anybody listening. We've got friends out there. They'll come if they know there's hope. They will. First Order wins by making us think we're alone. Mm. We're not alone. Good people will fight if we lead them. So, so first off, the guy in the back is like, I don't like know this what's guy. What? Like this guy cannot yeah. see. His, this guy does not have line of sight. He doesn't know who's talking. <laughs> he doesn't know who's talking. And, He's behind the landing foot thing. He can't see. Right. He can't hear. There's probably and, then, and if you go back to that picture, there's like there's like coming out of the. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. This gas here, like <laughs> shh, like real slowly, shh. and like these people are listening to this gas. They are not hearing what the command people over here are saying. <laughs> like this person what? back here, like no way, no way are they seeing who's no. talking. It's just shh. The whole time, and at the end, like clap, 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 clap. We're going to war. <laughs> clap, clap. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's and it's even worse than that. So there, uh, probably half the people here can't hear a damn thing. No way. The Is other half, because the command people here are talking with their regular voices. They're not like projecting out so everyone can hear me. Yeah. Like we've made a decision. Like no, they're, they're like discussing it in yeah. a little small circle over here. Yeah, yeah. Get the sound system out. We need the speakers. Uh, we need a projector so everybody could see. No, no, no. We're going to go low under this ship where nobody can mm -hmm. see us. Mm -hmm. And who's talking? Nobody knows. Rose is talking. Lando's talking. Finn is talking. Who are we paying attention to? Nobody knows. <laughs> I mean, why don't they just why don't they just get in a ship and then talk over the ship's PA system? That's a great idea. I mean, basically, do anything but this. What are you doing? What are we doing? <laughs> Not only that, the plan is terrible. The plan is hope and pray that Lando is the ultimate diplomat. What, what the hell kind of plan is this? Like that's right. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna go blow up some towers, and then Lando is going to get people in a hope and a prayer. 
they don't say like like attack at this coordinated time they're just like hey lando go out there and get people and show up when you feel like it <laughs> and hopefully yeah. we'll still be in the fight what's what's our timetable our timetable is whenever you get here that's not a timetable that's the plan lando will take care of it <laughs> lando will take care of it wild ridiculous yeah just get, get stand up on the top of a box stand, get, get, get a box get a box climb up top everybody knows like this is the speaking box you got something to say you come or, or like three boxes if you got you got something to say queue up for the line step in the box say your thing and then everyone knows who's talking that's right do they not they have this base they don't have like a speaking area like an auditorium even if it's improvised but like you know some kind of acoustics so they can give briefings and, and speeches. I mean, you need to do this. Mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you can't give speeches from underneath craft with <laughs> Who's talking? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody Launch the knows ship. The Let's go. Is. Let's yeah. go. Where are we going? Follow the guy in front. Where does, does he know where he's going? He's following the guy in front. Somebody knows. <laughs> Who do they follow? They follow Ray. So Ray, Ray finds the Wayfinder, and so she like plots oh, yeah. a course and where to go, and then the fleet follows her. And I don't know why they did it. That's Luke Skywalker's X-wing. It's transmitting course markers. So 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 Ray's in Luke Skywalker's X-wing, and it's traveling along this like W, this zigzaggy mm -hmm. stuff. She has the Wayfinder in her ship, and she flies mm -hmm. through them scary, like chaotic stuff. It's Ray. She's going to Exegol. Like, what is this? Like we're in space. Yeah. Now we take the war to them. All right. If I mean, she has an X-wing. It's small, maneuverable. She's going through it. They launch the fleet. They go through it too. No, it's a rough ride. Stay locked on race course. But, 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 but this is space. <laughs> this is space, and they have, they have, they have light speed. They have whatever they, the jumps. So why do they follow like through this maze stuff that's super dangerous to maneuver through? Why don't they just jump to the end? Or, or, right, or, so or, I... or go around it. Yeah, so Ray has to go through it because that's the plot, that's the path that's plotted for her by the Wayfinder. So she has to follow it. Okay. She has no choice, I guess. But space is big. Once they see the path that Ray is following, take space and go around it. Yeah, that's like that's like you find a treasure map from like 1200s. And so yeah, you follow the map exactly because that's how over made the map it is, right? Mm -hmm. But now we have helicopters like. Just, just fly to the end. Like, we just, what, we just go around it. Right, and the only reason you wouldn't use a helicopter in the modern world is if you couldn't afford it. But they have light speed. They, yeah, they, have they can just jump traffic. for free. For free, right? And to say it's not free, they say you have to get fuel. This is the final battle. It's worth not taking mm -hmm. the risk mm -hmm. to go through the whatever the red place is so some of your ships don't get damaged. It, it, it doesn't make I, sense. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know why they did this. You don't. I mean, it's so yeah. dangerous. Well, I mean, is is the unknown regions surrounded by rocks? Like it's just, uh. <laughs> that. That's the only way I can make sense of it. Is that this is like the narrow tunnel? This is the narrow tunnel, and then everything else on the map. If this is like solid and you're going to die if you go through it then okay and this is like the narrow tunnel that you go through there like like in a ball pit it's like you know those tubes you can like crawl through mm -hmm. if this is the only way through then okay then i get it you need to go through it but if this is not solid then just jump through like just, yeah, and it's, just jump right through it's an unknown region of the galaxy that means it's i don't know five percent of the galaxy i don't know what it would be okay. but if it's surrounded by rock that's probably more material than the, is all of, in all of the universe. Like, it's, oh, I see what you're saying. If this is so dense that you can't that you can't go through it in a different way, then this is pretty much solid, which means it's an enormous amount of mass. It, it's it's not just enormous. It's like so large that it would like it. collapse on itself gravitationally. Let's say, say let's say that it's large, but in order for it to be large on the scale of of the galaxy on the or even on the scale of a single solar system if it's if it's large if it's if it was the size like from from the sun all the way out to uranus if that was a solid block in space you could still go around it right so this, this, this must it. be so large that you can't possibly just go around it with with ships that can travel at light speed faster than light speed that's right 
it's an un, it's just an unrealistic amount of mass to create this narrow corridor where I could just go around it with light speed. I see what you're saying now. If there's something that's so large that has so much mass, it should collapse on itself. Either start mm -hmm. a star or start a black hole. Yeah, or something. But somehow there's this little tunnel here that you can only get through through there. I can't, I can't make sense of it. I can't, I can't make sense of it. I don't understand. I can't it. make sense of it. But it was cool and it was dramatic and everyone through the, this tunnel. They got through there. I mean, they're taking the huge ship through this tunnel. What are they doing? Yeah. Let's do slow and steady too. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, we're in a rush, but we're we're not going to be able to fight if we crash. That's right. But they make it. They make it to Exegol, and Ray has this one-on-one -on -one talk with Palpatine, and I think Ray should have taken the offer. Kill me. That is what I want. You will sure. be Empress. I mean, Palpatine, he's, he's literally asking to be killed. Mm -hmm. And then when yep. he's killed, then then Rey is now the Empress of the Empire. And she refuses it. But but if she's the Empress of the of the Empire of the First Order, mm -hmm. couldn't she like couldn't she gut out the high command and then pull in Rey and Finn and all the rebels? Like she's she's the Empress, right? Who, who's gonna say no? And then now that you have the structure of all the first order or the final order, you can be like, hey, you go out to this planet and do good things, and you go out to that planet and do good things. Right. So if she kills Palpatine, does that guarantee that she becomes a dark side? I think the answer is no. So you kill him, retain your light side mindset, and then take over the administration of the final order and do good things. It's good not stuff. like the it's not like the crews of the star destroyers are like, damn it, we're not doing torture and Pillaging. I quit. I wanted to hurt people. I wanted to hurt. They're, They're following like, no, orders. I follow, I follow orders. I sweep the floors. Like, right. And then I maybe know. the high command people, maybe they are the ones that want to do evil mm -hmm. stuff, but mm -hmm. you're the new empress. Get rid of them. Right. And plus, you just give. you could get rid of them or you could just say, hey, just follow my orders. I will give you a good life. Just don't kill people. Ooh. Heck, you can even still threaten the high command. Be like, you don't mm -hmm. like me? Ceiling choke. And then they stay in line and they that, keep their other people underneath them in line. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And then and then I guess if you're really worried that, you know, that dark stuff is going to happen, you can dismantle the organization from the top. Yeah. And replace it with the new, new Republic. Yeah. She could step down just like Luke did and then leave the First Order and now the command of Poe and Finn. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Actually, yeah, yeah. Give it to them. So there's no guarantee. Like, just kill him and stay on the light side. Yeah. In fact, they, she does kill him and stays on the light side. That's right. <laughs> so all of the people that were killed in the final order, the thousands and thousands, those were preventable deaths. Ooh, I don't know. I don't yeah, I guess, yeah. She could have taken them over and kept their, like, health insurance <laughs> and their salaries <laughs> and, and, yeah, and made them just do good stuff. Like, hey, like, you guys did some bad stuff before. Go out there and clean the streets. Like, mm. Sure, that's good. Unless, thing, right? uh, unless the organization of the Final Order is so evil, like, through and through to the bone, like, the janitor is just ready to start killing civilians. Like, My only loyalty is to cleaning this floor and evil. <laughs> 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 yeah. Cleaning this floor and evil and i have my collection of knives to go start slashing people i only invasion <laughs> i only clean the floor for the sake of evil people like <laughs> they don't care yeah. ray and kylo are a force dyad this is what this is two people who are like intimately connected through the force no matter their separation physically sure Stand together, die together. The life force of your bond. A divert in the force. Okay. Unseen for generations. Generations. So that means a force dyad is rare. So 
Very rare. Palpatine knows about it, okay, because it's written down somewhere. He's never seen it. Um, I don't think so. It sounds like it happens for gener happens every generations. That's the time. Generations, plural, like so, hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe even Mm -hmm. thousands of years. So, in this short time span, we've got a chosen one, Anakin, and a dyad. These really two rare events happening almost simultaneously on galactic timescales. Yeah, on galactic timescales, we're talking about thousands and millions and even billions of years. And then we had these two, this dyad and the chosen one come up within like a hundred years. Not only that, but like they, they're in the same bloodline. It's like the grandchildren. That's right. So this is, so the, the story of Anakin. The chances, and, the chances of this must be tiny. Right. Right. That means they're, so they're out of sync. The dyad comes every generation. The chosen one comes every few generations. I don't know, thousands of years, 5,000 years, whatever it is. And you know they're different. They they happen at different times, but at this point they're synced up. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They happen at the same time, roughly. I mean, they're a couple 20, 30 years apart. Twenty but... something years. They're twenty thirty years apart on the scale of thousands is like point zero zero something mm-hmm. percent. Like it's it's yeah. so it's very small chance. And I think the galactic civilization has been around for like twenty twenty five thousand years. I can't remember the numbers. <sighs> Which means they can't have seen a dyad or. A chosen one very often. Right. So I looked up dyad because I was like, what is a dyad? Right. So I looked it up and it happened one time in Legends and okay. it was two Sith. But other than that, these two are the only other dyad. So I guess Palpatine saw it written somewhere in Sith documents, yeah. but otherwise he's never seen it. Also, I mean, we- okay. Also, can we appreciate that Palpatine's memory is like crisp, right? Right, he's like he's never seen this before. He's seen it written about generations mm-hmm. ago, and he's like, "Oh, a dyad! I remember mm-hmm. that." Like, mm, that's good memory. That's right. He's like in the Sith Academy studying the notebooks of the he ancient masters, everything. and he's just fifty years, sixty, seventy years later, he's like, "Ooh, I saw dyad. that on page something." Yeah, it's in this book. Your yeah. dyad. I've seen that. Yeah, dyad. Because it's not like super obvious, is it that they're a dyad? I guess it is. He gets like a little so, blowback from his lightning. Yeah, but how does he know that's because of Dyad, not because he shot them both at the same time? Like, is it only a Dyad with reflected lightning to him? I think that must be. It must be. Only a Dyad can reflect lightning and lightsabers. No, but lightsabers absorb lightning. They don't They don't f- fling it back. That's right. I think I, no, so, I think maybe you can fling it back if you if you slash it at them. Uh, most of the time we see them we see them just like absorbing the lightning right just stopping it it's weird but are they a di- but so but in episode eight they were they that's when they started talking to each other through mm-hmm. through space through their like their mm-hmm. vision brain yep. but snoke said it was because the snoke did it so like because that kylo ren and and ray weren't strong enough to communicate across space like that so snoke was the one that was making the connection for them so either snoke is lying or or Palpatine is. I think it's got to be Snoke is lying. He recognized right. the dyad. And then instead of saying, oh, you guys are a dyad, he undercut it by saying it was my manipulation. Oh, it was me doing it. And, and it has to, be, has to be Snoke lying because they still do the communication even though Snoke's already dead. That's right. So with, without Snoke's help, it still is there. So right. Snoke was trying to manipulate them by lying and saying it's Dang. not a big deal because I manipulated you to do it. What a read. Yeah. Huh. Which means you can't trust the Sith. Which means Sith. when Palpatine says Rey is my daughter. A granddaughter. Take that with a yeah, huge, like, oh, huge sorry, grain of salt. Huge, yeah. yeah, granddaughter. Huge grain of salt. Yeah, because why should you trust him? He's Sith. He's evil. His, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Daddy Palpy said so. Grandpappy, Grandpappy, Palpy, Grandpappy, Palpy. Said. <laughs> How powerful is force lightning over the huge distances, specifically targeting multiple ships simultaneously? What is going on? Like, wow, look at this. Single type, single X-Wing targeted. 
So, so it's like 30,000 volts per centimeter. <laughs> I'm not doing this calculation. <laughs> yeah, it, it's an yeah. enormous amount of electrical potential. And, and Palpatine is a sniper. Like he gets, he yeah. gets all the rebel ships, but all of the first or the final order ships untouched. Untouched. So that means he can shoot this lightning like into the sky vaguely and then branch it out and hit like pinpoint only the ships he wants. Right. And he's not just hitting like, oh, I'll hit the capital ships. No, he's like, there's there's X-Wing and Y-Wing. Yeah, individual fighters. Right. We're going to target those too. So he's like branching it off. Lots of lightning to the capital ships, less lightning to the medium ships, even less lightning to the little guys. He's got targeting information about all of it. How did, what? <laughs> why why would limits. you even, why would you make a fleet? You just make one ship, a tiny little ship, a little personal yeah. carrier, and you just drop off Palpatine in a planet. Just pew, done. Pew. Next. Yeah. I mean, all you need to do is protect him and make sure he's mm -hmm. well-fed, healthy, and everything. And yep. just anytime the rebels come, just send out the lightning. Yep. Just, hey, can you go outside? The rebels. Like, the rebels. done. Like, which one is the rebel? Don't worry about it. I know. Like, <laughs> my lightning's got this. <laughs> my lightning's got this. Where are they? They're over the hill. Doesn't matter. My lightning's got this. If he's got this kind of power in him, why doesn't he shoot Ray and Kylo with this? weird that's right that's right that doesn't make sense he like dials it down for human levels but you want to kill him so this is this is one of those things that you were talking about where it's just big for big sake like right this this is just so big it's so big and then it it doesn't like it it's big it makes this attack super well big and sh shocking and and awe and makes you feel awe but but he only does this once then like why 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 did this happen but not anywhere else like what what's the consistency That's in his right. character so what's the point of the fleet what's the point it changes mm -hmm. the tactics it 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 changes the tactics is really the big big thing because it, then it yeah yeah it, yeah yeah it just it got ratcheted up for some reason and then lando lando what is going on with lando so he is the ultimate <laughs> diplomat within yeah. hours after the crazy briefing, he is able to go out to hundreds of planets and moons and star systems and, and grab all these ships. He, he amassed the biggest fleet that the rebels have ever had. And he did it within a few hours, a day. Okay, so there's no way that Lando as an individual can go make this happen. This means he no has way. to have a whole diplomatic administration, apparatus, structure. hierarchy, apparatus, structure. Mm -hmm in place that he can just call upon and be like hey uh, in secret so when, like the rebels don't even know when lando calls his five guys they call their five guys they call their five guys and you get a word out super fast to a bunch of people and like there's loyalty all the way through there so that when, when lando makes the call it gets spread out that's right because he cannot do this individually so that means he's set up this diplomatic administrative thing mm -hmm. in secret in secret yes in in secret from the first order yeah and also from palpatine and the final order and yeah. it's also secret to the rebel alliance right yeah. because in episode seven and episode eight and even earlier in this in this in episode nine they're like there's nobody out there there's nobody listening we're alone it was like well mm -hmm. you have to convince yourself you're not alone. but then that means lando had these people ready yeah. to go but he just he never told leia like he kept a secret from her too that's right so when leia in episode eight needed people to come and help lando is in this in the background building this <laughs> diplomatic machine this army yeah and he's like don't don't let i'll, Le I'll keep Le any I'll help keep my cards here like i don't yeah. tell leia like, i don't know i don't want to be on the side of the rebels just yet that means she may but in in eight she may when they're in that that bunker where they had to get that mm -hmm. that cannon the, the, right. they yeah. they're in there they made a call out to people that means lando didn't answer then He's like wall of silence people we're not ready yet we're not ready this is not this is not the final episode of this battle like we gotta wait for the end then we'll come in this just this means lando is like the ultimate administrator human per like human relations person diplomat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in fact the fact that he's able to do this means this is the heart of the rebellion lando is the leader of the rebellion lando's the leader yeah, maybe he was waiting for Leia to die so that way he could oh. come in and save the day. Oh, 
And that puts him at right? the top. Oh, that puts him at the top, right? Because if he comes in earlier and he saves the day, but Leia is still in command, then she thanks him. Everyone thanks him, but mm -hmm. she's still the leader and he goes and, home. Right. But now as like, who's the leader of the rebellion? Like who's the most senior people, people it's Chewie and Lando. And Chewie's right. the one and, and Lando's the one that showed up with the ships. And Lando, yeah, so Lando is the one who can call upon these people and give orders and tell them what to do. And who's going to fight that? But Leia is I mean, he, gone. Lando backstabbed Han back in the day, right? That's right. So maybe Lando's always been a free agent out oh, for himself. He's, and here he's, it is. Playing, he's playing the long game. Mm -hmm. Right? Because all these people he, have loyalty to Lando, not loyalty to Leia or the, Re or the Rebellion. That's right. Because because Leia and the Rebellion asked for them to come they, in mm -hmm. episode eight. They didn't show up. Which means in episode eight, he was he didn't show his hand because he wasn't confident that they were strong enough yet to take on the First Order. Mm -hmm. It's only when he knew it was going to happen that he shows up to save the day. Okay, hot, his, hot take, hot, hot take, hot take. Lando's the Sith Lord. And this is the new first, the new second order. Right, he like he come he comes in when the rebels are going to take out the final order, and then the rebels are like yeah we did it yeah yeah but actually Lando's there like hur, 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 hur. like these people are all loyal to me, we've taken out Palpatine, no one's expecting me, I'm one of the good guys, but here's my fleet, I'm in charge. Okay, I like Lando, I don't want it to be true, but that makes a lot of sense. Yup. He's been he's been doing this for years, decades, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. planning this. And his moment has arrived and he pounces. Mm -hmm. He pulls off his mask and he's actually Palpatine the whole time. Oh. <laughs> Pal 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 Palpatine's the bad guy. <laughs> no, but I mean, maybe Lando, you're saying Lando is the ultimate he's, bad person. He's force, he's force spirited by Palpatine inside his body. But it's, it's like actually, it's actually Lando's body. But he actually has Palpatine's like soul transferred to him inside, and the Palpatine that we see die here in this movie is actually a clone. Oh, I was going to go the other way, where it wasn't Palpatine manipulating Lando; it's Lando manipulating Palpatine, and Lando is the ultimate bad. Yeah, that's even better. And Palpatine is so when when Palpatine created the Empire, he made himself unknown to the Jedi Order. Lando has done the same thing to Palpatine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, He's mm -hmm. been so hidden. Palpatine has been unaware of Lando the whole time. He's the Phantom Menace. And this whole time, Palpatine's like, "Ah, oh, I'm the Sith Lord," but but actually, <laughs> but actually, Lando is the one's like, "I'm actually behind the scenes. I'm letting you climb up in your Sith powers, but letting you think you're the Sith Lord, but actually, you're mm -hmm. not. I'm like, actually, I'm Lando. I'm actually right. the Sith Lord." Yeah. The then he swoops in. Who's Menace? That's right. Yeah, that's right. It's Lando. Woo. I think we'll crack, we cracked the story. We we'll cracked it. Massacre? At the, at the end of this battle, um, the, re the rebels killed so many people. Like, let's watch this. Watch how many people die. There's thousands in each Star Destroyer. Look at this crowd getting killed. There's thousands. Boom. I see. There's, that's each one of those Star Destroyers. Thousands. Oh. Cool. Yeah, the good, uh, good guys leave. Triumph. But how many thousands, millions perhaps, just got slaughtered? Isn't that a big deal? Um, I mean, I guess. So, so I guess. I mean, okay, let's 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 try to estimate this. So, these things, I think these aren't actually people. These things, no, they're people. I don't think so. I think they're statues. They're statues, like because I think Palpatine was there alone with his with his a couple servants. I think these are statues, and but it, it was super confusing. I watched it a couple mm -hmm. times because, like, you hear the crowd cheering mm -hmm. but i think there are sith statues that are supposed to like represent all the sith that came before uh -huh. um so but 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 that i mean it, what that's kind of not important to what you're saying though right because mm -hmm. this is a few 
hundred people, maybe a thousand if, yeah. or people or statues or whatever. But mm-hmm. you're saying that in the battle, every one of these starships has like a thousand or something more people on it. Yep. Okay. So they all died. Yeah. Or well, they're bad people. Like they're, I mean, I guess they're final order people. We, we, we did decide that the each janitor is out for cleaning and slaughtering. So yeah. Yeah. Every, <laughs> every one of these ships it represents what a thousand, 2000, 3000 mm-hmm. people that are, you know, yeah. Not part of the universe anymore because they're bad. But isn't this an ends justify the means sort of thing where it's like, well, we need to slaughter th- thousands and thousands and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people for peace. Like, yeah. I mean, if those hundreds of thousands of people were going to be doing bad stuff, killing like millions of people, then it in the interest of the rebel Alliance and the rest of the galaxy that the, they'd be deleted, I guess. Right. Is it is, but that's so many people isn't that a dangerous thought process like oh there's we, we're starting a new republic and there's there's a planet that is a problem well i got a solution i mean okay so these but i see what you're saying but these are all bad people like they're <laughs> going to go out to the galaxy well, no, no this is right they're bad they were going to go out to the galaxy and do bad stuff right mm-hmm. so like yeah if you had an entire planet that were like sith planet like they're they're just they're they may not have killed people yet but they're Sith. Like, they're going to go out and kill people. Like, that's what they do, right? Wait, don't, doesn't the f- First Order and Final Order capture children from around the galaxy as recruits? Doesn't that mean they're slaughtering captured people? Yeah, but they were captured and then they were trained to be evil and then they became evil and then they go out and do evil stuff. So, like, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're stopping people from doing evil stuff, then... Is this, if the, it, I don't know. If the if the indoctrination takes, <laughs> oh. I see it. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the, it, but oh. but this is the yeah. But the rebels this, won, right? Like the rebel, yeah, the, the, the rebels are the good people, and so yeah. they defeated their enemy. Like, isn't <laughs> yes? I can't. I mean, you gotta gotta win the war. You gotta win the war. Yeah. I still don't like it. Hey, so Chewie finally gets his Medal of Bravery. Let's watch. Chewie, this is for you. Hey. Hey. So I think this was because in episode six, Chewie did not, oh no, episode four. Uh, episode Chewie four. did not get a medal, right? And everyone else did. Yep. But the thing that was weird here was that he got the medal from Maz Kanata. Like, yeah. Who who is Maz Kanata in terms of the Republic? Like before before in episode four, Luke four, Luke and Han got the medal from Leia, right? And Leia is I think no, was it? Or is, is it is Le- Leia and um uh what's the red headed woman's name? From Andor uh Mon Mothma. Mon I think Mothma. she was like she was like the non force user but ad- leader administrator person. Right. So, so effectively like the president if mm-hmm. we're in terms of American, like, like the highest yeah. ranking official gives you the medal and like that, that's a yeah. problem. And so, but who's Mas Kanata in terms of the rebel? Like, isn't she like a random person? Like, like, like she's not in command of uh, anyone. She's not a higher up. She's not, like, who, is, who is she? She's a collector of artifacts. So, so, but then, but then this is, but then this is like, this is like getting a, like you, you save as bus, you save a bus of school children and you, the, 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 the city is the cheering and, and then the local pawn shop person is like, here's a medal. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Like, that's great. Like, like, who are you? And where, where did you get the medal? Well, I just had it out back. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. So, so this medal, I wonder, yeah. so I wonder if this is actually Hans or Luke's medal. Right, because Maz Kanata has Luke's mm-hmm. lightsaber, so she yeah. has this like, yeah, she's a hoarder. Like she has basements full of stuff. I'm like, so maybe this, maybe this is actually Han or Luke's medal. Which means this, mm-hmm. this would be very touching for, for Chewie. But also, mm-hmm. like, who's, who, who are you, Maz Kanata? She's like second handing medals around. Like oh, this was, uh... <laughs> and she's like, she's like, by the way, let me know when you die so I can hand that off to someone else. Like, yeah, 
Oof. This is, yeah, still under contract. When you die, it's mine. This is just a loner. Like you can... <laughs> <laughs> the loner. <laughs> Dang, your family doesn't get to keep it. It's coming back. Come back. Everything makes its way back to my basement. Yeah. But in fact, in fact, you want a different it. metal? Because uh, I've got, got choice back here. Yeah. I get warehouse. you the, the least blood covered ones. Like you did such a great Dang. job, Joey. Great job. Such a, such a great job. Do you need a ceremony? No, I'm just going to hand it off to you. Okay. That's right. Nobody else sees it happen. <laughs> <laughs> so later on, Chewie's like walking around with the metal, like super proud. And then everyone's like, okay, sure. Right. Okay. Is that, is that Luke's metal? Did you uh, even earn Did that? you steal that? I didn't, I wouldn't need that back. Chewie, you can't yeah, have that. That's Luke's metal. Yeah. That's Luke's metal. This belongs in a museum, not around your neck, Chewie. Dang. Brutal. <sighs> Now, Chewie's our hero. He was, he's been through two wars now, and he's critical in many stages. Chewie does not get enough credit. For sure. And then we end we end this series, the, the the trilogy, with the friends that they made along the way. This this scene was very powerful because mm-hmm. you saw the character arcs for you call it the character arc for for Ray, and then you saw the bond between all three of them. Let's watch. Yeah. So she's being congratulated by the crowd, the crowd of her peers of the rebels. And she, she was mm-hmm. this girl who was, who was abandoned on Jakku and lived out in the desert by herself, just not being mm-hmm. acknowledged as being like being a human, being important, being, being someone to care about. And here at the end of the, of the war, she's climbed to the top. She's achieved all these things and everyone around her respects her. They, they acknowledge her. She's seen, she's heard, and, and she's important now. Like incredible, that incredible yeah. story for her. Great journey. And then they make eye contact with Finn and Poe, and you see them. You see them melt. You see it. You see it. I see it yeah. in Finn's face when yeah. he, when you see him, just holding it back. He was afraid. He was mm-hmm. worried that they weren't going to make it, but they all made it out. Right, because they still could have won, and some of them didn't make it out. They all made it, which is they all made it. Reunited. This is the journey that they made happen together, and it was it was just it was just teetering on a knife edge. They may yeah. maybe they're going to win, maybe they're going to die the entire time, just right on that mm-hmm. knife edge, and they made it. And they made it all together at the end, triumphant, mm-hmm. to now serve under Lord Lando. The Phantom Menace. <laughs> but yeah, it's that would be a feeling when, if you all survived, mm-hmm. and you've been through all of this for, I don't know, it's probably been a decade now in Star Wars timeline of them fighting, and it's over, and they're all alive, they made it through, dang. Struggling all the way, maybe not going to make it alone in the universe, nobody helping. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, they everyone came together and supported mm-hmm. the cause. And Ray has her friends and the recognition of the, the people. Mm-hmm. What a, what a journey from being this orphan on Jakku. Right. right. And so, so, and I mean, she was powerful the whole time. She was force sensitive. She was strong. She didn't have a lightsaber, but but as soon as she picked it up, she was clearly competent. Like she was a warrior the whole time, but she didn't have the respect and the recognition and the acceptance of all of these people around her, around of the society around her. And because she was on Jakku and this like living out in the desert by herself. Yeah. So she gets that recognition at the end of this trilogy. Whew. Yeah. Everyone around her finally, they finally see her. Yeah. And uh, that's it it. for the whole trilogy. Mm. Where do we go from here? I mean, we, I think we just cracked the code. Lord Lando is where we go from here. That's the new daddy. That's right. Episode 10. There it is. Lando, Lando rises up from the ashes. And if they're going to, if they're going to make this Ray movie coming up, maybe it's Lando V Ray. (gasps) (gasps) Yeah. Think 20 years later, the society has been rotting from the inside yet. Lando hasn't aged at all. Hmm. Suspicious. All, yeah. Maybe there's some things that you can <laughs> learn from the Sith about life, extending your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
totally. And it's finally over. It, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Seven, eight, nine was a. Uh... Thanks for watching. Gosh, it was. It was. It was tough. It was. You know. But there, there are some the, very nice moments. There's nice moments. There's great acting. Yes. But like, it's. It's a struggle. As an audience member. All right. See so you let's guys. Let's take a break. We'll time. watch something different next time. Yep. See you then.